When making Shopify apps, it is our duty as a Shopify developer to make our Shopify apps easier to use and navigate. Hello and welcome back to another video for Shopify Laravel app development. In today's video, we will learn how to create a new page in a new navigation menu item for our Shopify app projects using Shopify app bridge. Now this is the continuation of the previous video where I showed you how to install Shopify CLI and use it to create a Laravel app. So if you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend you do so. I'll put its link in the video description below or you can click the eye icon right over here. So without wasting more time, let's begin. Now, if this is your first time to learn Shopify app development, there is a library called AppBridge. So what is AppBridge? AppBridge is a JavaScript library that allows you to embed your app directly inside the Shopify admin. So just like now, our app is embedded inside the Shopify admin. In addition to that, you can use Shopify AppBridge to customize or create UI elements outside of your Shopify apps. For example, you can use Shopify AppBridge to create a modal, a navigational bar or a menu, and so on. So today we will only learn how to create a new page or a menu item just like this, so we can use this in the next video. Okay, so let's go back to our project. Open your VS Code and open your project. So the first thing that we're going to do is to ensure or make sure that we are logged in. So let's open our terminal, new terminal, and then let's type Shopify, and then who am I? This should give us our Shopify development store and then our partner organization. So as you can see, I am not logged in. So I'm going to use the login command. So Shopify login. So login should open a new browser window and it should ask me to log in. And I am now logged in. I'll go back to my VS code and it should ask me to select partner organization I'm going to select number three with an ID um, 1800931 just like in the previous video and now I am logged into my store Elena development store my shopify.com and my partner organization weekly how now we'll check once again who am I now if you're only getting partner organization um, your partner organization without your development store you can use the Shopify login and then the store flag and then just type your development store and it should ask you to re-log in okay but since i already have the development store i'm not going to continue i'll just serve the shopify app so shopify app and then serve and it should give me a url that we can use there we go and then it will ask you to update your application url just say yes and you can open the following url and there we go, now we have an error. Now we need to run PHP artisan command and use the following port, 8081, just like in the, previous lead, uh, in the previous video. I'll open a new terminal and I'll type PHP artisan and then serve and then use the port and set it to 8081. And there we go, now we can just go back to our browser and refresh the page. Now it should either redirect me to my development store or it should ask me to to relog in. Now, since we already installed the Shopify app, it's not going to redirect us to the OAuth page. And there we go, so you can see it redirected us back to the Shopify app. Okay, so now that we have our Shopify app opened, the next thing we're going to do is to create a new menu item here in this navigational uh, menu. We're going to create a new menu item. So let's go back to VS Code and open the resources and then the JavaScript or JS and then open the React and open the components and open the app navigation. And then we can just minimize this just like that. So in this component, we are using two actions, app link for creating the menu item and then navigation menu for creating the menu itself. So once again, app link, this is the app link. So the home and then example, that is an app link. And then the navigation menu is the menu itself, basically this entire menu bar or just this two, basically. It's not the navigational bar, okay? So we're going to create a new app link. So let's go back to VS Code. And then underneath of this example, we can just create a new variable. We can call it script, scripts, and then use the app link action, and then use the create function. And the first parameter that we're going to um, pass is the app. So if you're wondering what is this, this is the app 
variable. So it's using the following hook, use app bridge. This will actually initialize the app bridge. So you need to pass that to that function. So app, and then in the second parameter, we need to pass an object. And then we need the label and then the destination. So the label, that's the label of the link. And then the destination is the path, um, the URL, or basically the um, path name of the page that you want to visit. So for the label, we can just set this to um, scripts. And then for the destination, you can set this to forward slash scripts. I apologize for the noise outside. So we can just end this with semicolon. Now that we have the scripts variable, the next thing we're going to do is to apply this to the navigation menu action. So here, as you can see, we have the following items. We have the following array. So we can just include the scripts variable in this array. So first is home. Second is the example. Home example. And then we can just include the scripts after the example. So scripts. Now, if we save this, and if I go back to the browser, and if you refresh your app, we should now have here the scripts. And there you go, as you can see now we have the scripts menu item. Now, if you click this, it's not going to open any page. That's because we still don't have that component or that page. And also if you click that, as you can see we have, we don't have the green bar underneath of the link. Unlike if we click the home, as you can see it's active. So we can make that active by going back to the app navigation and by including the scripts here in this switch. So we have the following condition. We need to check the value of the path name of the location. So the location, you can find that right over here. It's using the use location function from the React. And then it's going to return the path name. So basically, um, if we click this example, this is the path name. So it's going to check this. If the location that path name is equal to example, then we're going to set the active menu item to example, just like what you're seeing here. So we can just do the same thing underneath of the example, we can create a new case, and then the condition is going to be forward slash, and then scripts, and then colon, and then use the navigation menu variable, and then use the set function, and then set the active to scripts, okay? And make sure that you break out of that switch case. All right, so let's save that. And let's go back to our browser and let's refresh our page. And there you go, now let's try and click the script menu item. And as you can see, now we have the following active menu item. So the next thing that we're going to do is to create the page itself. So we can do that by going back to VS Code, obviously, and by opening the app.jsx inside of the React folder. So right over here, open the app.jsx. And then as you can see right over here, we have the following switch. So we are going to use the route to create that page. So we can just add a new route over here. So route. And then set the path to forward slash scripts. And then the component that we're going to use is called scripts page. Now we have two options to create this component. It's either we create a new function just like this for the example page, or we create the component inside of the components folder. So we can just create a new component file inside of the components folder, or we can call it scripts page.jsx. And then we can just import it here in the app.jsx. So here, use the import, and then it should be the scripts page from the components folder, components, and the name of the file is called scripts page. And it with semicolon, and now you can use this in that router. So route, scripts, and we have now the scripts page. Make sure that it's the same, scripts page, scripts page, okay? Save the file, and then let's go back to the scripts page components. We can just import react, or we can also create a function and then we can call it scripts page. Now, if you don't know how I did that, you can use the um, extension called simple react snippets. 
you can install that and you'll basically be able to um, create those snippet um, codes. So IMR to import React and then FFC to import the function or to create the function. And then we can call this scripts page and then we can just return here a div. So div and then we can just say something like this is the scripts page. Save it. And then let's go back to our app. And then open the home and refresh the page. Now the reason why I click home and that's because I want this to be, you know, in the index first. And then if I click the script, I want the scripts page to be open. Okay, so now that we have that reloaded, we can just open the scripts page. And there we go. As you can see now I have this as the scripts page. So that means we have opened the scripts page. And there you have it. Now we have created a new menu item and a new page. In the next lesson, we will learn how to use Polaris to create a user interface. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button. And if you're not sub yet to the channel, it is now the best time to do so. Hit the subscribe button and go to our channel and make sure that you enable that bell button so you won't miss our future uploads, especially the next part of this series. So once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.